quote, my body, my choice, unquote, should be consistent for vaccines and abortion. Five, four, three, two, one, move. Or you can stay on the neutral line. You, you can think. I'm going to give you another minute to think. Do you want to stay on the neutral line until you hear what other people have to say? Okay. Okay, so that's fine too. So you strongly agree with that claim. Tell us why. Yeah, um, so I just think that ultimately people should have the right to decide what to do with their bodies. Pretty basic, um, uh, I think, at least at this point in my life. Um, and whether you decide to vaccinate yourself or to have an abortion should generally be up to you um because you know you would be the person that would mostly be tasked and burdened with the um repercussions of that you know there's an argument about how vaccines are communal but you know if there's one in a million um possibility of side effect and you're permanently crippled that choice of risk versus benefit should be primarily with the individual um and you know in in conversation with their community but i don't think they should be uh necessarily forced to, to so people should so the i just want to make sure i understand this correctly yeah. so people should basically have the right to do what they want with their own bodies is that the yeah, essentially yes okay okay so i'm going to go down to i'm coming back to you in a second so you what do you think you're on the strongly disagree line as the question is formulated there yeah i think we're talking about apples and oranges abortion is an individual's decision uh, that might involve a, a, a father as well, but primarily the, the woman's decision. Well, vaccines deal with infectious diseases, which are a community problem. So as far as abortion, sure, that's their, you're right. As a vaccine, if you decide against it, you're putting other people at risk besides yourself. So he said that it's my body, my choice uh, across but the it's board. Not, it's your body, but it's in your choice, but the consequences aren't limited just to you it, with a vac vaccine. But with abortion, they're not either, because because you're talking about another existence. Mm, I think that's debatable at, at a certain point, yes. But the person who's involved makes a decision. If it, she has, a, has an abortion, it's not going to affect him or me or someone else. It affects the fetus, sure. Okay. But, okay. What are you? Are you in agreement with him? Because you're certainly not agree agreeing with them. Right. Um. Well, I agree with your conclusion. I have, I would, I would state the argument a little differently. I would say number one, the burden on a person getting a tiny jab in your arm is tiny, and the burden on a person to carry a pregnancy and give birth to a child you don't want is enormous. So they're not comparable. I would say the consequences of failing to vaccinate are um, to cause harm, including death to people who are alive and who are sentient and who we all agree have value, whereas abortion causes harm to an embryo or a fetus, and we do not have a societal consensus that embryos and fetuses have enormous moral value. Got it, okay. So, we, we, we heard, you heard theirs. Yes. You heard his, I'm coming back to you now. What do you think? I do appreciate a logical and consistent argument. So I do think that um, if we had to say my body, my choice, um, I do feel more passionately about women's issues. And so that's why I would be here. Um, so, so how come oh, you violated the rules? Come on, you go to Dartmouth, right on the line, right on the line. So how come you're not on the agree? Um, I just think I don't know enough about the topic and I'm still right. open to being swayed either way. Oh, well then why aren't you on the neutral? Because I still slightly agree. Because you have, a, is it a moral impulse that you have that puts you there? Um, I or is it a reasoned argument? I think it was the way that I was brought up. Okay. So it's a, it's a, so if you were brought in a di up in a different household, you may be on the slightly disagree. Yeah. So the fact that you were brought up in the household that you are was primarily arbitrary. Sure. So the belief must be then arbitrary. No. Well, why not? I don't think that logic tracks. Okay, tell me why. Um, because although I was brought up in a certain household, I've since like become my own person. Oh, okay. I don't think so. You've chosen. I don't think we have to absorb everything okay. that we were growing up with. Okay, so you've heard their arguments, 
and you've heard his arguments. Um, are you, what do you think? Oh, that's, that's a great question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're all here tonight. <clears throat> um, Ooh, I, I, yeah, I definitely don't know enough about, uh, neither of the two subjects. Um, and I think it's really interesting that, um, they're put together the yeah, yeah. vaccine and the abortion, uh, uh, arguments. Um, for one part, I think that, um, we should create a society in which human life is valued. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also agree that individuals should have, uh, the liberty to, uh, choose some of their actions. But, um, to the point that I just made about human life being valued, I do recognize that, um, by choosing not to be vaccinated, you're putting other people at risk. Um, and then on the abortion side, um, well, um, I think that, um, oh, how do I say this? Um, woman should, um, we should have a society in which woman could voluntarily choose, um, uh, they could see that abortion is, uh, is a viable option. Um, but, um, for example, I, I saw a video uh, the other day of how, um, uh, in a business, um, the employee was paying this, his workers $70,000, uh, per week, like salary and the birth rate increased like dramatically. So I, I think that if, if you create a society in which human life is welcomed, um, say alleviate poverty, uh, Okay. Um, then, you know, women wouldn't see abortion as the only viable choice that they have. Okay. So and I know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing and I hope I've gotten this correctly. If I haven't, tell me. They're saying that there's a fundamental difference for vaccines and abortion. Mm -hmm. It's like a, in philosophy, you say it's a category mistake. It's a mixing of categories. They're not the same thing. Is that basically correct? Basically. And he's saying it's not a category mistake. They, they fall in the same category because it's someone's body. So what would it take to move you to slightly, like what would, what argument could they make? I'm not saying they can make the argument I'm saying, what could they say to move you to slightly disagree? And what could he say, or maybe even she say to move you to slightly agree? What, what would, what would they have to say to you? And then I'm going to ask them if they can tell you that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think for the to agree more um it'd be if if an argument could, like is made of say uh will and liberty and you choosing your actions and uh, uh the freedom to make choices you mean that, that if he if somehow he can show you that liberty is extraordinarily important yeah, then I, more important than public safety um then that yeah that human actions uh that you have the power to choose them and you should, you, you know, you're responsible to make those choices, then yeah, I'd be compelled to move. Can you give him that argument? Sure. Well, I, I think generally you want to live in a society, um, broadly speaking, where the individual can make the choice because the alternative is a society where you always have to make the choice that either the state wants you to make or um, you have to think exactly as your community does. Um, and I think that's more dangerous um, because then your interests are devalued and your existence, I think you're valuing human life less if you go to that extreme. Now, I'm not saying that necessarily this particular issue is um, on that line, okay. but I think that um, moving away from this um, voluntary choice of vaccination and, you know, for example, not treating the vaccinated if they're hospitalized is a very dangerous idea because, you know, you could extend that to obese people even, and you can say, oh, look, they may be. So you're also saying that there's a consequence to this. Uh, I, I'm just saying that the type of reasoning where you try to draw the lines around a particular group of people can be easily extended. Did that make you want to move one there? No, but she uh, did say something about them not being grouped together. I'm Ellen. Hi, Hi Malika. Uh, and I'm just wondering, I'm starting to rethink why they have been grouped together um, and why the phrase my body, my choice has been used on both the right and the left. To why do you think that they've been grouped together? 
I'm not sure. I'm trying to think about well, what that reason is, but I'm more so thinking that they shouldn't be. Oh, so that was that was both of their arguments as well, right? That they shouldn't be grouped together. Okay, but before I come to you, did he say any? Did he persuade you to to go one line over? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and take, move over. Okay. Okay, so I would like you to to speak. <laughs> Just so you got to stand on the line here. The rules of the game are very, very simple. <laughs> Truly, they're just extraordinarily simple. Okay. Okay. So um, we now have two people in, in the slightly agree camp. Um, what, what, what do you have to say specifically to them, if anything? You don't have to say anything. I was, I was thinking more about vaccines and the social impact. Okay. And it occurred to me that if Christopher Columbus and his crew and all the other colonists that came over yeah. had been vaccinated, then a lot fewer indigenous Americans would have died of infectious diseases. And we had a whole different history. So that puts in a little bigger perspective. Uh, if you don't get vaccinated, you might infect some other people, maybe not. But there it had a humongous impact. Do you have anything that you want to say to the... Uh... Slightly agree, folks. Yeah. I'm sorry. What's your name? Oh, Nacho. Nacho? Okay. Yeah. That's so a cool I'm name. The sense, I'm getting the sense that your argument perhaps comes from uh, a place where you're not entirely comfortable with abortion. You're someone who values, who thinks a, a fetus has a high moral value, not a low moral value. Is that a fair? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, so then I would... Uh, just fall back on you're you're welcome to like that's your value Th those are your morals your values and that's great but we as a as a society we don't have a societal consensus that fetuses and embryos have high moral value most americans actually think that fetuses and embryos have much lower moral value than living sentient people and so we shouldn't establish a policy. We should establish a policy that's more based on our consensus than that's based on your personal. So can, can, I'd, I'd like to ask you a question. So just because there's a consensus, it doesn't mean the thing that there's a consensus about is true. That's that's true. That is true. But so um, I'm not sure this, why. This why would the consensus cases. persuade? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. I I would just say this is one of those cases where I think that um, historically the American consensus that, that fetuses have lower moral value than living sentient people like, is one that, we, that has been manifest like for, for generations. The abortion rate in this country has, has barely changed in hundreds of years. So I think we have, it's just established that that's our value system and it's not gonna change. I'm, I'm curious. Um... Just as a hypothetical, and I know this is a huge hypothetical, and if you're not comfortable answering, don't answer it. If you could be shown to your satisfaction that a that the, the, the fetus had more moral standing than you currently believe, would you be willing to move? I'm not saying I can show you that, but would you be willing to move, the, or is it just too weird of a hypothetical? It's... By saying it's a moral question, I'm saying that it can't be proven or not proven. It's a moral. It's a moral value. People have. I thought. I thought if it's a moral question, then some people can be wrong. You mean it's an opinion? Yes, it's a. The opinion is how much moral weight do we grant to embryos and fetuses? And is there a truth of the matter to that? Mm. No, I think a moral value is by definition something that's not. So if it's not empirically true. So if it's there's no truth of the matter to that, then it would seem that half of your argument falls. No, because what's true is that we don't have a consensus. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, pondering this. Um, had anybody said anything that gave you pause to go to the agree line? No, but I, I think that uh, what I'm hearing is a very compelling case for people to be vaccinated and to... <laughs> That's what I took. That's interesting, yeah, that you took. No, no, but to, to me, the way I understand it is I think it's a good argument for why people should be vaccinated and raise awareness about 
um, issues of community spread mm. that you know it, it can have an impact. The, the Christopher think, Columbus thing I was that made that me that was interesting. Yeah, pop, yeah. Uh, but I think ultimately the decision, and that's how I interpret this question: the decision should still be with the individual, and we should respect that. Okay, so we're gonna wrap up in a minute. We have three questions from from folks. Um, so what do you, you're agreeing? What are you thinking? What are you thinking of those arguments? What do you th and the fact that specifically it gave him pause? The the was it that specifically was the Columbus argument? No, I, I think it's a yeah, I think it's a great argument to get people to um, embrace vaccinations. Okay, and and if that's the case, then the position seems stronger, providing you buy the the abortion argument. So what do you think? What what do you think? You've heard the best arguments people can make. Are you confident that you're standing on the right line? Yeah. What gives you that confidence? I think some people would argue, and this is not my personal belief, no. that um, um, by women getting an abortion, they harm not only themselves, but, you know, a living thing. And so you c that argument for vaccines, and I do think that as a society, we have a responsibility to protect and keep uh, others around us safe. But again, I'm just seeing more and more how I don't think that they should be grouped together. And I don't think that my body, my choice should be the phrase that's applied to both. Okay. All right. Okay. What do you think? You move now. You Are you more confident that you've correctly calibrated your belief here? No. No. Want to um, move back? Um, well, I, I think, um, uh, what, what's your name again? Vlado. Vlado? Yeah. Um, I, I think he, he had put into perspective this idea that... Um, um, that the individual has the power to make choices and that um, he can guide those, those choices uh, to certain ends. And I agree with that. I don't think that uh, you're, someone else should dictate uh, the choice that uh, you make. Um, so, so, okay, so you're, you, okay, so you think that this is the right line, I don't want to put words in your mouth. No. You, you, you think this is the right line, but you're not very confident that this is the right line. Yes. Uh, I, I am not confident uh, that this is the right line. Yeah. How, how confident are you that this is the right line? One to a hundred, one to 10, with 10 being maximal confidence, five being, I don't know. Get eight and a half. How confident are you that you're on the right line? I would avoid quantifying that as to not um, rob myself of the opportunity of changing my mind if I have to. So you could say nine then? I, you know, I think people have a tendency to stick there with their views. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll go with a seven, even though I think my... Seven? Even though I think my arguments are decently fleshed out, I think there's a danger of believing that you have the right answer at a nine or a ten because... Uh, so I just want to drill down on this. So you think you know, you're a seven on strongly disagree. So yeah. if you stood on the agree, then that would mean you'd have to be lower than seven. Could you repeat that question? Well, usually when people stand on like strongly agree, their confidence is higher. But at seven, your confidence is coming in, you know. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think my conf I think I have well-reasoned arguments for why I believe what I believe, which is why I'm in strongly agree rather than agree. If I was in agree, I think that would be maybe something that I've heard or slightly agree something that I've heard for the first time or I, I'm not okay. sure. But um, the reason I'm a seven is because, well, who am I to say that I have the answer to this okay. question? Okay, so I'm curious now. He thinks that he has well-reasoned arguments. Now, the key is I'm not asking you if you agree with him. I'm first asking you if you understand his arguments, and I'm second, I'm going to ask if you not agree, but do you understand and do you, do you understand the reasoning behind them? So do you understand the arguments and what his reasoning is? Um, I don't understand, but almost ignoring the social impact of spreading infectious diseases. Okay, fair enough. Oh, sorry. Um, I am not sure I understand Vlad's argument. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to hopefully maybe we'll flesh it out in the Q&A. Uh, say who you want the question for and then ask away. So my question's for Vlado. Um, you were saying in the very beginning that uh, you're aware that there could be a, a communal argument made, but that you think that there is an individual harm to getting vaccinated, which is like, you, I think you quantified it as being like one in a million. Um, Their individual risk? Yeah. Of, of everyone who gets a, a, a shot. It's, it's something relatively minor for most vaccines yeah okay um 
So you only quantified that side, though. You didn't quantify the side of everyone else in society, of the community. Um, and I think there's a bunch of, and I think we agree on this, that there's a bunch of reasons why, you know, a certain, if, if the number of vaccines is below a certain threshold, everyone in a society suffers, such as, you know, yeah, super spreader events and all kinds of things, people dying from the disease, but also people indirectly dying from the disease, like if the hospital is filled up with COVID patients who were not vaccinated, who probably not have gotten COVID this badly, if they have been vaccinated then, and you have a heart attack on the same day, um, you are, you probably have a, a worse chance of survival. Um, so I, I know that it's hard to kind of quantify those. And so I'm not going to come up with any numbers So what's here. your question, my, uh, my question is, what kind of balance between those numbers would convince you to walk to the agree line? That's a great question. Um, just quickly addressing the reason I didn't quantify it, because I think it's a lot more difficult than looking at the statistics of, of vaccines themselves. Uh, the balance... Um, it, 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 that's also a difficult question because I think when the balance flips, uh, people's opinions will also flip in the sense that they would be more willing to get vaccinated even if they're vaccine hesitant. But I would I would say that it, it needs to be something for me um, like 1 to 10 or 1 to 50 uh, because I think the principle of having the right to uh, generally choose your life's decision is um, such a broad and important one that I think there's some sort of an inherent danger if we normalize um, communal precedence, even though there may be uh, good, very good arguments for it. So it's a, for you, and I think you've been consistent throughout this whole thing, it's a, it's a, for your first principle is individual liberty. My first principle? Uh, I, I well, think in this context. I think it's, yes, largely because I think it's worked out pretty well in a lot of contexts and generally or, or very often whenever um, precedence goes to uh, state power um, and, and, and it often goes to state power because that's the most effective way you can enforce community mandates, uh, okay. things go uh, rather poorly. Okay. And, Cool, I, I got it. All right, anybody else want to ask a question? Come, come on down. And we got two, we got one more. We're going to do a faster round after this. And uh, please say uh, who, who, if your question is general, just say it's general. If it's to someone specific, just say it to the specific. This one's also for Vlado. Uh, my question is, if you're you you said that your first principle is liberty, but then you went on to say that liberty is only valuable because it prevents state abuse, because it prevents these other harms, these other things that you think are bad for people, for society, for other institutions besides liberty. Is liberty something that's good because it's good or is it good because it helps society? And if it's good because it helps society, doesn't there have to be a balance? Because it's obviously... Okay, that's all good that we got yeah. that question. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I think it's a slightly tricky question. You know, if you, if humans were you know, wild animals, and uh, at the first hint of liberty, they were to try and murder each other, I think liberty would lose its value. But in the current system that we have, um, I, I would say both in that, um, and, uh, you know, I wish I, I had more time to think about this, but uh, both in that I think we all yearn for liberty and for freedom and to have the power to make personal choices and to live happily. Um, and also because it seems to lead to good effects. So I think there is luckily a uh, consensus in how both sides of that coin lead to good things on both the individual and the community level, generally speaking. All right, cool. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. You're good. Give them a round of applause. Good job. <laughs>